hello again. We're going to be graphing absolute value equations, absolute value functions actually, because they're all functions. And when we graph a linear equation, you know, like y equals x, y equals x plus 2, it looks like a line. And if it has an inequality sign, then it's dashed. Uh, if it has an absolute value sign in it, surrounding the x, in any of these three cases, then it's going to look like a v. All absolute value equations look like a v. Uh, some people say that parabolas look like a v. No, they're a u. This one actually is a v. It's a sharp tip at the end. So, that said, we're going to go ahead and graph. Now, a lot of students don't feel comfortable graphing anything that's not a linear equation. And there's a very simple reason why that is. And the simple reason why is because uh, they don't make tables, or they don't know how to make tables very well. They don't, and they don't try to make tables either, which annoys me because if you wanted to learn linear graphs, you have to learn how to make tables, so you have to do the same thing here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with the second and third table first because I think it's going to be more clear that way. And then I'm going to go ahead and table the first one. When it comes to making absolute value tables, what you do is uh, you look for the opposite value of the number with the x, and you divide by the number in front of the x. That will be your vertex point, your middle point on your graph. And it will be the middle point on your table. Let me say that again. You take the opposite, excuse me, at, uh, opposite, value, opposite value of this number, and you divide by the number in front of the x. That's a safe way to start graphing absolute value uh, functions. And it, it, it actually works. You should do it. It's, it's fantastic. So the opposite of negative 2 is 2, and 2 divided by the number in front of x is 1, so it's 2. 2 divided by 1 is 2, and you're going to put that in your middle value. Okay. And when we come up with a table, I like to make 5 points usually, because it's just safe. Okay. After 2 comes 3, after 3 comes 4, before 2 comes 1, and 0. For this one, you take the opposite value of 2, which is negative 2, and you divide by 1, which is negative 2. Uh, a little bit bigger than that is negative 1. It's not negative 3. Negative 3 is actually smaller. And then you have negative 4 and 0. Then, for this one, there is no number that's with the x. It's just there's a 0 afterwards. So you don't have to put any, you don't have to think about your value. Your middle value is 0. And then 1 and 2 to the right, negative 1 and negative 2 to the left. Now, that's how you make a table, and it, it, it's pretty cool, actually, once you get that into your system. It, it's not so bad. You're going to take these values, you're going to figure them out in your head. Now, my ultimate goal with this is to just have you try to figure out how a graph or how an equation looks like without even making a table, which is so cool because if you can graph something without taking the time to make a table, it's so much faster. I mean, I look at these three and I could do them without a table. And that, that's not bragging. That's just, you know, you do math long enough and you know exactly what something looks like just looking at it. If I plug in 0, if I substitute in 0, the absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. Absolute value of 2 is 2. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. If I substitute into this one, the absolute value of 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, but it's the absolute value, so it's 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2's absolute value is 2. If I substitute a negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. I know I did that quickly, but you should substitute it in yourselves. I just made a table. I just figured out how to graph them. Now, I told you they all look like v's. Whenever you're doing an absolute value, it looks like a v. Uh, there is a case where in my very first year of teaching, somebody said, well, what happens if it's an absolute value on the square, then the parabola takes over. But if the absolute value is on the outside, whatever is on the outermost of the x kind of works like a parenthesis. That's what it's shaped. But that's too advanced of an example now. That's a, that was a really good question, actually, now that I think about it back in the day. So this is a v. That's a v, that's a v. But they're not all going to be in the same place. So I'm going to graph the first one first. Probably well, should do a little different marker. Negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2.
hopefully you saw that. And I didn't block too much of it. If I draw it out, it's a V. And the lines extend forever. There you go. That's what an absolute, basic absolute value function looks like. Now let me uh, point out something really quickly because we haven't done this in a while. The domain and the range. The graph goes forever to the left and it goes forever to the right. So it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Not true with the range. It doesn't keep going down. It stops at zero. And it includes a number zero, so we're going to use a square bracket. When it includes a number, it's a square bracket. When it doesn't include a number, it's a circular. Well, doesn't it have infinity? No, it can never reach infinity. That's why we always put a, uh, a, um, a uh, rounded bracket as opposed to a square bracket. The range, though, goes up forever. So it's infinity. Remember, domain is your x values, how far it goes each way. Range is your y values, how far it goes each way. Now I'm going to graph the next one. 0, 2. Hopefully I'll get out of your way doing this. And what happened is, it's a V, except it got pushed to the right. Let me say that again. This one got pushed to the right. It's funny, actually. If it's negative 2, then it's going to go 2 to the right. If it's positive 2, then it's going to go 2 to the left. It actually goes in the opposite direction of the number. So if it's a negative 5, 5 to the right. Negative 6, 6 to the right. Positive 6, 6 to the left. This is something called a phase shift. Uh, it's more popular in pre-calculus when you're working with sine and cosine, and eventually I'd like to get to that. But uh, whatever this number is next to the x, or x you know, minus or x plus a number, that's how much is either going to shift to the right or it's going to shift to the left. So a negative number will shift to the right and a positive number will shift to the left. Uh, finishing this off really quickly though. And I got it in black, purple, and brown for the respective graphs. The domain goes forever both ways. And the range stops at 0 and goes all the way up. So its lowest value is 0 and its highest value keeps extending to infinity. Never reaches, that's why we have a circular bracket. Last one. Negative 4, 2. I should do this in brown. Don't know if you can actually tell the colors though looking at this. And the graph shifts to the left two spots. Domain and range of the brown graph, this one is exactly the same as the previous two. And that's pretty much it. So if there's anything that you have to learn from this particular lesson, it's this. If there's no value inside the absolute value of the x, uh, when I'm adding or subtracting, not when there's a number multiplied, but when I'm adding or subtracting, then it starts at 0. If it's negative, then it shifts to the right, how many ever values it's asked. If it's positive, it shifts to the left. Now, if there's a number in front of the x, that changes it up a little bit. And we're going to end up doing that uh, in our next lesson, but not just right now. So with that said, have a great day for now.